You probably didn't realise that Mercedes-Benz also manufacture light fittings. Unfortunately, Mercedes don't realise that either. The slogan for this particular one is Style of Create New Styling Do to show the Vogue house to reside the life. And the instructions are very clear. Cut off power supply, rectifier, pull down to bad tubes. Are you ready to change the LED dome light source module? Ooh, yeah. Light group of absorption on the chassis plate with the lampshade. The new lamp modification is complete. Well, that sounds very straightforward. Let's take a look at the Mercedes-Benz series LED module. Luxury. And here's why it's called the Mercedes-Benz series. It looks a bit like their logo. I think we should test this. So the first thing I'm noticing here, it is one of these ones that sticks on with magnets. That'll be the absorption bit. Uh, and it's got what looks like a little buck regulator or even an isolated regulator inside it. Let's bring up the hoppy, stuff the wires haphazardly into the hoppy as one does. Oh, they're stiff and unpleasant wires. Very thin wire. Also very short wire. She'll try poking it underneath here like that. Uh, I shall stuff these in. It probably doesn't really matter where they go. Which order, because it is AC. And I shall plug the hoppy in. Hopefully this won't just blow up. I mean, hopefully it does blow up, to be honest. Ooh, it's cold white. Vicious cold white. You won't be able to see the hoppy. Uh, the hoppy is saying 18 watts, which is quite ferocious. Uh, 0.56 power factor. That's typical 129 milliamps. At our local power supply, which is currently 248 volts. How generous. Almost a quarter of a thousand volts we have. That's lovely. Very useful. So how's this going to open? Usually, well, there's the little plastic cap that covers the ballast. I wonder if it's all fully charged up in high voltage and stuff like that. Uh, oh, it looks like it's using a bright powery type chip. Let's discharge that capacitor. Let's just do it with my fingers. Uh, it's discharged. Yes. And we'll also, uh, oh, this isn't screwed on, it's actually just little clips that hold it on. That's interesting. Let's maybe pop that off as well. Uh, so I'll take a look at this. Well, I'll actually find out what chip it is for this. I'll try and even stay in shot, maybe even zoom down so you can even see what I'm looking at. That'd be quite good, how unprofessional of me. Uh, okay, so the chip is a... I could just cut to the chase here. Well, I can't read the chip anyway. It's got very vague text, right? One moment, please. Okay. Exploration has been done. It is time to explore this and then hack it. Obviously, we're going to hack it. There's the hackable bit here. So, the supply is coming on here with live and neutral, and the live is going via this tiny little track here, which is the fuse. It's going to a bridge right far, and then it's going straight out to that smoothing capacitor. It's a buck regulator, so this is just an inductor. It's got the dedicated chip DP9501B with the current sense resistor and another resistor down here. Well, let me zoom in this just a little tiny bit. And another resistor down here that sets the overvoltage protect. Um, there is the standard buck regulator arrangement of a freewheel diode capacitor but they've added one thing that's not in the manufacturer schematic they've added a 200k discharge resistor it's just hidden behind here let me show you that right now I'll show you it there is that resistor just tucked right up against the capacitor you might not be able to see it it's very tiny it's a little surface mount resistor interestingly what they've done here is they have used a surface mount resistor for program the current plus also this blue red gold uh, through hole uh, resistor in parallel with it to fine tune that current. Uh, blue, red, gold. The gold is actually a divider instead of a multiplier. So that is basically 6, 2 and a divider. So it's 0.1, it's 6.2 ohms. But goodness knows what's underneath. I could always cut that off and find out. We will cut it off and find out. And then we'll swap it and see if we can get the current down to a certain acceptable level. So the actual schematic, it's very close. The only thing that's really different here. Uh, from the manufacturer schematic is the addition of a resistor over here in parallel with the output. That may just be to ensure that when uh, things are turned off, the voltage goes down to a sensible level, and that is 200k. So that is basically going to act as a, dis a discharge resistor. Uh, I wonder if that's also potentially going to be a sort of anti-glow resistor. But anyway... We have the live neutral come in here. Ignore the earth symbol here. What that means is it's the zero volt reference. It's the 
circuit ground reference. They've kind of it's misleading when they use that earth sort of thing because it makes it look like an earth connection. There's the smoothing capacitor. Here's the chip. Uh, there's the current sense resistor. Uh, there's the over-voltage protect resistor. Now, the over-voltage protect resistor uh, measures the voltage uh, that is being applied across these uh, LEDs. How does it do that? How does it monitor that? Oh, it will probably be monitoring from here. Uh, let me tame this down a little bit. It's quite savage. That's better. Um, but you set... Choose the resistor, it's got a given current, and if you look at the manufacturer's data sheet, it says the overvoltage protect has a current of 40 microamps, and it's got a voltage threshold of 150 millivolts, which will probably set, by choosing that resistor for that level, um, it will set the voltage across that. Not quite sure how that works. The current sense input, on the other hand, is very straightforward. It's 0 0.6 volts, 600 millivolts. This data sheet has an anomaly. It mentions the MOSFET's voltage rating, but then also gives it presumably the on-state resistance, but it's high. In the case of this one, DP9501, it says 8.5 ohms. That's way too high. I would have thought that would be milliohms. Could be wrong, but that, I'd expect that to be milliohms. Here's the operation. When the circuit is running, this... It has a MOSFET inside that switches down to the current sense, so the current flows through the current sense pin to the zero volt rail. Um, when it does that, the current flows in the positive through the LEDs, through the inductor, and that end is positive, and that end is being pulled negative, and it flows to zero volts, measuring the current in the process. Once it reaches, the inductor will initially push back against that current, but once it reaches the threshold of 0.6 volts across that resistor, and this is how you program the current uh, through the LEDs, uh, it turns off. When it turns off, this end stops being positive because the magnetic field collapses and this end goes positive and this end goes negative. As the field collapses, it goes through this freewheeling diode and back through the LEDs. So in both cycles, the charge and discharge of the inductor, it uh, puts current through the LEDs and that capacitor smooths that. Uh, so this is a bit we're kind of interested in here for hacking this. Let's take a look at the resistor underneath that. So if I go back to this picture here and we brighten the image up a bit again. And we bring the circuit board in. I measured about two ohms across that. But let's cut that resistor off and see what's lower. I would expect a much lower value resistor than even the, uh, the value of the through-hole one. And the value is... 1.8 ohms, that is very low. 1.8 ohms, can you see that? Uh, so let's remove that resistor and double it to about, actually increase it even higher to uh, 4.7 ohms is a nice value I've got because that was roughly 2-ish before. This one was basically 1.8 ohms being tuned marginally to possibly about 1.5. Uh, I'm going to make it 4.7, and it was 18 watts before. We'll see what it is afterwards. One moment, please, while I make that modification. The hack is done. I actually put a 3.9 ohm resistor in, which is roughly double what was there before, so it should theoretically half the power, do you reckon? We'll find out. Now, the LEDs in this, it's parallel pairs all the way around. Presumably that's to, um, well, partly to fit in the power within a given voltage. But it will also mean that if one LED fails, uh, it, the other will pass the current. It's not a great situation. They're not well matched. When I was probing them with the meter, one would always be bright and one would be dimmer. So it's not perfectly matched LEDs. That's not great. Other things worth mentioning, the overvoltage protect chip is also interesting in that if you pull it to the ground rail, it turns the output off and they actually suggest that you could use that as an en enable and disable uh, control. I don't know how fast you could control it if it could be positive modulated. But anyway... I've made my modification. Uh, let's turn the LED down the way. Let's point it down the way. That's better, so it doesn't just swamp light in everybody's eyes. And that way we'll be able to see what the meter actually says. So I'm stuffing the wires into the hoppy here, into its completely non-compliant electrical connections. This may just blow up. Goodness knows. It's, it's always messing, dicing with death with these things. Let's plug it in and see what happens. Nothing. Oh, that's not good. 
That's probably because I've got a bad connection here though. Our thatter it just doesn't like that resistor I've put in. I shall try fumbling the connections here and also make sure that uh, things are plugged in properly. Oh, maybe I've blown it up. Exciting. No, it's not liking it at all, is it? Is that too... Is Have I gone too high with that resistor value? Uh, hold on. If it's not running, I should get a fairly high voltage across the capacitor. The death beam capacitor. Let's probe that. Although it has its own power supply inside as well, so that will be affecting that. Not getting anything across there. Am I getting a good connection to the thing at all here? Uh, the hoppy is notable for it's not exactly what you call an ideal electrical connection system. Let me bring in my more dangerous one. Oh, here we go. Why well, don't I think of using this thing? That's better. Let's give this another go and then I'll maybe experiment swapping that resistor about. Are these connections still made on here? Let's screw this video up, shall I? Let's just leave it in. Because it's more convincing when, uh, when you see what does actually happen in real life. So I shall pop that wire down there. And that one down there. And uh, plug this in. Keeping this uh, circuit board away from here. Turn it on. Nothing at all. Right, I have to explore this further. One moment, please. Ah, problem solved. And it's a weird one, an interesting one. It is now working uh, at a reduced power of 12.5 watts, which is a good step down from the 18 watts originally. I'd rather it was lower. But it turns out that it was capping the voltage to 50 volts. And if you work out, if we get the kink calculator in, there are uh, 24 circuits of LEDs with uh, roughly about 3 volts per LED. It means that it needs a 72 volts. And the reason it was capping the voltage at 50 volts is because the current through the current sense resistor seems to affect the over voltage protect reading as well. That's strange. That is unexpected. Now, there is another option there. If you were in that situation, you could either increase the value of this resistor uh, or remove it completely because without the resistor it removes the over voltage protect and that means well let's do that for the sake of experimentation so let's unplug this and I shall remove this extra parallel resistor I put in to get the uh, resistance down low enough to the get the correct sort of current that I was kind of needing for the for the thick get, well get it closer to what it was before this is just experimentation experimentation going on right here and there's that surface mount component, which I shall, uh, this is all unplugged. I shall just dab some solder on the other side and wipe it off. Or I might just chop it off. I might just chop it off. It's easier. But, uh, let's abuse my side cutters and cut that resistor off if I can. This is not what you should do with these side cutters. This is why I usually have to uh, order lots of them, because I usually destroy them like this. So I've cut that over voltage sense resistor. I reckon, well, it's either going to blow up now or it's going to operate at a power level of probably about six watts. Shall we find out? I shall pop uh, the screwdriver, which I've just dropped. Yeah, I just dropped that screw. Not to worry, I'll just use this one again. I'll prop that up so you can see it lit. I shall plug it in and hopefully it won't just go kaboom. So this is without over voltage protect. And now it is lighting at the expected 6.2 watts so that's interesting uh very useful to know i guess that when they're designing these they must have to basically uh experiment with the values put a potentiometer maybe on the over voltage protect turn it up to the point that the leds go out uh, measure the value and just use a slightly higher value than that uh, but there we go educational didn't expect that. I'm pretty sure I'm getting deja vu now that I thought I'd wrecked a light in the past by doing the same thing. And in reality, uh, it was probably the over voltage protect on that very same chip. So the answer there is you can hack them, but it's a bit more complicated than, than the other lights. And if you do hack them, um, 
you can lower the power of this light and you can make, say for instance, you can make it last like 10 times as long by running a fraction of power because quite often they grill these things. But there we go. Interesting stuff. And I've learned something about the DP9501B. That resistor there, the value of it is dependent on the current sense resistor. Very interesting stuff. But that is your Mercedes-Benz lights. I, I drove Mercedes-Benz vans in the past. They're not designed for big people. The biggest, longest, most awkward van I've ever driven was a Mercedes-Benz. It was just the long wheelbase one. Very scary. I'm pretty sure I took out a sign on a traffic island once with it. But these things happen. I didn't go back and look. I just drove off. Uh, but there we go. The, uh, the Mercedes-Benz unofficial LED light and how to hack it.